Outlaws, though, like I said before, I'm weirdly there for it. I can kind of just go for the fast food approach that is the Ubisoft open world formula because I haven't done it in a while. Um, and I, But like I said, the factional stuff is what got me in a lot more. Watching the gameplay demo, seeing, um, I actually forget the main character's name. Kves. Kves, uh, watching her literally respond to people and go in the moment as someone cuts you off and says, well, I'll offer you a bit more money if you screw this guy over. I, I hope that isn't, I hope there's more to that. Um, I know that they've shown the factional meters and you can choose who you're going to align with, but I like the idea of on mission decision making kind of like Mass Effect and again Ubisoft like taking stuff <laughs> Ubisoft, and Mass Effect hasn't been a thing for a while um, and if you're going to channel a bit of um, you know a modern sci-fi opus it would be a Mass Effect game. it looks like there's something to be said about a very nicely detailed and authentically made licensed game yeah, even, there even, is. Even, <laughs> even even if structurally and gameplay wise it's not pushing the envelope mm. in any particular way although I do think the, 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 the factional stuff is, is, is exciting Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at this in the gameplay and the trailers that I've seen, apart from it leaning into some Disney cliches where you have the kind of, you know, fast talking protagonist and the cute animal sidekick and everyone's got banter, banter, banter. She's a scoundrel. You know, mate. it's not really a space opery as I would like it to be. Um, at the same time, I'm like, well, the way the, the, the gameplay they showed off at um, Ubisoft Forward where you just walk into the ship, I was yeah. like, this feels like a space I can inhabit. This yeah. feels really richly detailed and it feels like even if it is the safest open world Star Wars game that probably could have been made um, it still feels like it's fulfilling a fantasy that we as Star Wars fans have wanted to have for yeah. a very long time big time I got that like when you even just looking out when you're in space at the planets and stuff so well represented even small things and it's might make me a mark but when you're doing the lock picking oh, game yeah. and you've got the little gadget don't even know what this, it is but yeah. I was like the little spike is I was like spike? that's from Star Wars and I know what it is <laughs> this is a this is a coat of paint that I really like yeah just that idea of inhabiting a world it's kind of partly why I loved Jedi um, Survivor so much in the open world areas in that game because I felt so much more a Canteen. part of the world in the can yeah, yeah. exactly felt so much more uh, grounded to this universe than I ever expected to in that series. So if you can double down on that with the faction stuff, with that attention to mm. detail in the locales and the AI and the NPCs, I could definitely see myself just living out a little Star Wars fantasy again. It's not going to have the fidelity of Red Dead, but just the idea of walking through a town and being like, okay, what's going on here? That thing that um, Fallen Order and Survivor do, where it's, it's ostensibly one take once you get in the ship, and it's like you're going to a different planet, but you just sit in the cockpit, and in the game, it's loading in the background, but then you sit down when you're ready to land. That's so effective. I know they've shown that off for Outlaws as well. Like They have a better planet loading um, look than something like Starfield does. Like They're kind of like the original No Man's Sky tech demos, um, which I know No Man's Sky has changed its approach a little bit in terms of how that stuff is loaded in but making it all seamless where you're like because i want to talk about some of the, the gameplay stuff like they've got a wanted level system in here they've got chases where if you leave a um, encampment people will chase you on speeder bike or whatever and it's like that's cool having a speeder bike chase that goes to your ship and then seamlessly lets you take off do a dogfight and land on a different planet that's really sick and something that kind of feels like a new gen star wars game and a vision for a star wars game that hasn't really been pulled off can i be cynical before yes. you guys uh, maybe get more hype on it <laughs> when we were talking about assassin's creed and the worries um, from trailer to reality in terms of the systems and the <laughs> potential shallowness of them. That's the only thing that is keeping Outlaws at arm's length for me because I look at all of the stuff mm. that that team is trying to achieve with this game, the wanted system, the faction system, the on-ground combat, the space uh, combat, uh, and everything in between, the chases, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I just think there is so much in here that sounds amazing, but how is this all going to interact with each other? <laughs> is it going to no man's sky it? Is it no man's sky old, it? Old no man's Man's sky. <laughs> in terms of the complexity and the the detailness, how much of this is going to be ignorable, and how much is central mm. to the to the core loop of the game? That's the only thing I I worry about um, in terms of them pulling it off. Because is it going to be a are they going to be substantial systems, or are you going to get to the wanted levels and just be like, I can ignore these so much they shouldn't have bothered? Well, know. the um, the hands on press stuff said it was the compa the comparison mentioned was GTA, obviously wanted levels, but a, a better comparison once people started playing it was more like AC Origins and Odyssey's wandered levels. I forget if they were in Valhalla, but mm -hmm. in um, Origins and Odyssey, you would have those specific um, enemy types that were dispatched to try and hunt you down, but it, there wasn't really like a pressure on you. It was just that occasionally they would show up and you'd fight them or whatever. 
I, I think want, it's a bit I want more. space Tommy Lee Jones to, to yeah, oh, hunt oh. me down. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that weird Vice City ripoff, the uh, Miami Vice ripoff that's in Vice City. The one that level results in something special. Um, but yeah, Death Troopers are mentioned in this. Like, I, I think it'll be that. I think that at a certain wanted level or icons on the screen, you'll get a couple of Death Troopers after you or something like that. Um, but the, the, the way that they've shown it off, and obviously there's the argument that Ubisoft games demo better than they play, seems like you've got ships coming in from above when you're on the high level, uh, wanted level, and you're just making it out uh, with some loot or whatever the hell it is. I think there's just, there's a potential. The other thing I was going to throw in is that way back when uh, Watch Dogs 2 came out, there was a tech demo for a, um, their version of No Man's Sky that Ubisoft didn't make in the end, um, but you could view it. If you went to the um, Ubisoft office in Watch Dogs 2, you could view this little tech demo of like this space game that they had um, and this modeling software that they were using, that if No Man's Sky had landed better, I think they, they would have done it. Like I said, Ubisoft literally just loved doing what works, and there was so much hype around that game. I think that's what this is, because they've wanted to do a big No Man's Sky size thing for ages. Mm. Um, and I feel like it's eventually turned into this, because they never ditch code entirely. It's always, how do we reuse it? Like, we have a mountainscape, let's make that snowboarding game called Steep, because we have a whole mountain range that we should use for something, because it was off a Far Cry game. So I think that's what this is, and there'll be a lot more open, just open space No Man's Sky type stuff, because I think its DNA is rooted in that. Mm, it reminded me more of like the Lego Skywalker Saga, which is the only oh, yeah. like yeah. open world Star Wars game we got. And for the record, I think that game was a huge disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, but so certainly when you go into space and you're fighting the other, sp the, you get a distress call, you'd be like, oh, help me, I'm being attacked by the Imperials. And you can go, oh, I'll help you out. That's the exact same thing that they were mm -hmm. doing in Skywalker Saga. Yeah. So there is some a little bit, that, that's what it reminded me more of than than maybe like the No Man's Sky idea, because mm -hmm. obviously the levels themselves are so- Oh, like, so far it's totally yeah. bad. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm curious, my main, my main, I don't know what you're about to jump in with Josh, no, but my, no. my, my main concern at the minute, apart from just being bored by the main character and just the, the <laughs> kind of the, the main, just it, it, having an iteration of Star Wars that is so familiar and it's kind of what we've gotten a little bit bored of over the last 10 years, mm -hmm. um, is the combat. I really, really, like, I think the combat looks punchy, mm. but I want to see some more customization. I want to know that I can use more than just K versus Blaster and then pick up a bunch of Imperial weaponry. I mm. really hope this isn't a case where they've gotten notes from Lucasfilm and have been told you can't create these weapons because they're not already in, oh, in the law, you can't outfit KVS with these weapons because it doesn't make sense for quote unquote mm. the character you've built. That is my big concern right now. Because I don't know if you saw the other day, um, Sam Maggs, who worked on Star Wars Jedi Survivor, um, she was told by Lucasfilm Story Group that Merrin doesn't actually teleport. She just moves really, really fast when she creates great smoke because <laughs> apparently that breaks law if she can teleport. Right, right. Well, so we, I'm, yeah. No, but we went down to London and played a bit of Fallen Order. Yes. We were talking to um, the devs then, and they talked about how everything is a daily back and forth mm -hmm. email chains with um, like Lucasfilm for the brand Bible, and everything has to has to make perfect sense. Um, it does make me think because this is set between episodes five and six. Yes makes me think of um, the prequel tech, like Obi-Wan's ship and like, or some of the stuff that Boba Fett's ship does. And maybe you can unlock those things in a, in a dogfight or something. Big lasers coming out the side of your ship or whatever it is. What I will say is that it's a very good, they've set it in the right time period. As much as I'm burnt out on like original trilogy aesthetics, I would much prefer someone to do something set in the High Republic, like mm. Star Wars Eclipse, which yes. might never come out. I don't know. <laughs> um, the David Cage one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with the, the gap between episode five and six is really interesting because it's kind of like with the Empire at the peak of their powers. Mm. You've got the kind of the different criminal syndicates vying for control. It's a very short gap in between mm. those movies. Um, so getting to meet Lando there after he's kind of come back in with the rebellion, mm. that could be pretty exciting. Um, so on that front itself, I'm excited by that and the possibilities they have because it's less mind. There's probably more they can do in that space mm. than they would have been able to do in between four and five because they've really caned <laughs> the crap oh, yeah. out of that time period. Um, but yeah, no, just just concerned slightly that from the gameplay we've seen, um, it's very okay. So she's using a blaster, and she's using a blaster, and she's using the same blaster. It's and the they, division they, in space, and they've got yeah. different like aspects of like you can use the the stun to stun people instantly. You can use like specific bolts to to hurt droid enemies or whatever. Mm. But I would just like. Oh, why, what if, why don't she have, can she have two blasters at once? Can you have a modification yeah. where you maybe customize your blaster? Like, mm. like let us customize it like the Jedi Survivor lightsabers or something like that. Jump in the air with two blasters. Make it Max Payne. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what if it was Max Payne? It was slow motion in space. It's interesting you mentioned that. I hadn't thought about the limitations imposed perhaps from uh, the, the story group, but 
that was a huge issue I had with the two recent Battlefront games, and I never knew if that was a Dyson EA problem or if it was a Star Wars problem, because I'd never really loved the lack of variation. For me, it, in the blasters, it got a little bit better in Battlefront 2, but I wonder if there's only so much you can do with that weaponry under the constraints they have, because yeah, I was the same as you, Ewan, when I saw um, her switch between the different boards on that blaster, I was like, cool, but how how interesting can we get yeah. with this? I know it's only a, an early demo, but like what weaponry and what gadgetry are we going to get mm. to use? How different is the combat going to feel as you progress? Or is it always going to be that kind of basic loop of um, the sort of watchdogsy, division-y style run and gun jump? You're running like Han Solo. Like, yeah, yeah, which, yeah. I, which I, I mean, uh, for, it reminded me a little bit of a faster paced Red Dead of just mm, being like bang, bang, yeah. bang. Um, and then going in for like maybe a melee move or something. I just, yeah, I also hope that's a little bit more robust mm -hmm. yeah i think overall like with it because obviously they're both coming out this year like they both have like assassin's creed shadows and um star wars Outlaws both have that ubisoft template thing underpinning them um, and it's just seeing how much further beyond that they can get i feel like shadows is demoing a lot more confidently than outlaws is um but to me like just to, to touch back on the um it being, you know, attached to the canon, like it's between episodes five and six or whatever. I kind of want them to get away from the main thread. Like, oh yeah, I, totally. Yeah, like I, for me, Star Wars is. A, I know that Lucas talked about it back in the eighties or whatever. The idea of Star Wars being like a toolbox, like a um, a box of toys that you just give to different creatives and see what they do with it. And um, it's cool that Lando's in there, or it's cool that they've got Jabba. But like, I I want it to be KVS's own thing, or just just give me Star Wars ephemera and let me play in that world. I don't need the reminder that it's tied so to the movie. I think I think I don't have the concern that it's going to tie heavily into the Skywalker stuff. Mm. I think Lando is probably the closest we're going to get to actual tangible connections in regards to the, the main interlocking threads between yeah. Empire and Return. Um, but I agree with you in the sense that I would love to see, I think it's time that Star Wars games got away from the original trilogy again. Yeah. Oh, We've yeah. had, uh, post-2015, it's been a case of, and again, this this, this attitude filters into the TV shows as well, mm -hmm. where it feels like the creatives that were working in Star Wars for so long, by and large, were more concerned with reenacting their Kenner figure collections and like leaning into the nostalgia of, of stuff mm. rather than going what can we take that is new and I think you know Tony Gilroy did it with Andor where he creates something fresh and new Leslie Headland's doing it currently with the Acolyte where it mm. feels like we're actually getting you know fresh aesthetics fresh stuff obviously that came, comes from the High Republic but it's high time that we got another Knights of the Old Republic level of we are creating something original it, within that space. Mm -hmm. You know what? Be brave. 10 years ago with the sequel trilogy and everything that's come since, like, people our age and older got the original trilogy nostalgia. Mm. Just go back to do you give me a prequel to yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do this same thing, but with the lavish... Uh, Coruscant-y yeah, design, design. Coruscant or something. Life 1313 know. was meant to do that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That, would, that would have been exactly. between three and four. But I think something set before episode one or yeah. something in between episodes one and two, that, that we need more stuff like that. There's a lot of time, sorry. No, no. There's a lot of time between episode one and two, yeah. really, you yeah. know, while we wait for ten years. to get changed. Changed? Trained? Yeah, <laughs> ten years. You know, there's a, there's a cool setting there, I think, right no, for exploration, not just in the games, but in the telly shows or even movies or whatever they want to do. Not that I think they need nah. to just constantly go back to time periods already established. Mm. I do fully agree. Something brand new would also be cool, but I'm... I, I like the original trilogy. I like the games that we've got set w within that space and the other stuff we've got set within that space, but I feel like it's really mined. And Star Wars is so big, don't be afraid to just use another time period. Yeah, I think as well, like just to kind of round it off, for me, it's all in tone. Like the original movies have such a specific feel and the prequels were like big goofy. I mean, the goofy character stuff came in obviously in episode six. A lot of people have a lot of problem with it. I never did, but whatever. Like in terms of the um, the little dudes, the Ewoks, the the Ewoks and, um, and all the character creature stuff, creature character stuff that's in um, the revamped version of Jabba's Palace, that's a bit more egregious. And then the prequels have a lot of that stuff anyway. Jedi rocks, rocks. <laughs> uh, what's that thing with the, the thing with the big lips? Yeah, Sai Stoodles. That's the one. <laughs> stuff like that. People have big problems with that. And obviously the prequel trilogy has a lot of that stuff. And then the thing I was going to say was I feel like Jedi Survivor and Respawn's approach to it is a perfect way Marriage. of blending the two. Yeah. Mm. Um, where they have the creature feature stuff and they have that little Scottish diver alien dude. That yeah. to me feels in keeping with the original Star that's Wars. In, like Mos Eisley Cantina and stuff yes. where you always had the... But I agree with you, the terms of the tunnel divergence. I mean, we get, sort of way getting on a tangent here, but I always think because we're so accustomed to Yoda, everyone <laughs> overlooks the fact that that little freak was introduced 
introduced in the strangest way in He's Empire so Strikes Back. Awesome. And that could have gone, could have gone so wrong, could have been so weird, and yet we're just like, oh, it's just Yoda. Oh, it's pure Jim Henson puppet stuff. I love it. Like the uh, yeah, when he's trying to get the little the little bar and he's whacking R two. It's Gen- so funny. Genuinely, the only concern I have from the presentation side of things in this, apart from being a little bit bored of original trilogy aesthetics, is mm. that the dialogue to me feels very Whedon esque. It Ooh. feels like we're getting to that point where it's like I think um, everything does at the moment. Like you know, it, the, the sequels had this issue to a degree with characters like Poe and Finn, especially in the Rise of Skywalker, where it's quip, 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 banter, 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 and obviously there, there was quips and banter <laughs> in in the original trilogy, but Lucas's dialogue always has kind of, you know, it has a slight awkwardness to it, which mm. I find personally quite charming and is right. what lends so much to Star Wars its identity. It's why the Acolyte is working so much for me currently mm. because mm. it leans into that kind of, that that thing. So for me, it's a case of, I just need something to like, Lucas and Story Group focuses so much on the canon aspects and like, does this, is this right for the universe itself? Mm. But I would like them to maybe, not to say that everything needs to adhere to the, the will of Lucas <laughs> or the wills of Lucas is another little Star Wars reference for you there yes. um, but I would like to see something that is a little bit more, not that not that not that Atlas doesn't look sincere in approach but I just need something that feels like it's it's leaning into like give me some archetype that isn't the fast talking rogue with the Liverpool Apple sidekick yeah that's the, that's the thing like for as terrible as lots of Lucas's um, ideas have been or his dialogue approach or whatever at least there, there wasn't that much nature between all the kind Characters. Whereas in the post Whedon era, it's like everyone is the comic relief. Like something like Concord that got revealed the other week, where you can barely tell. It's like I can tell that KVS at one point is going to go. He's right behind me, isn't he? <laughs> like the jab at the hook. That or just whatever. happened. I think um, post Forspoken, I feel like if that was in there, you've got teams going back in and deleting those audio logs because that, that killed Forspoken. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that general tone is the thing a lot of people are sick of. And another example being Concord, um, which is pretty much DOA now after that trailer. 